This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 16th day of July in the year 2024. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting. Now here's what we're tracking tonight. Minister of Home Affairs Robeson Ben believes the time for patting the Ghana police force on its back is over. At the police anniversary symposium this morning, the Minister of Home Affairs said there appears to be significant accountability challenges in the Ghana police force, particularly in the area of procurement, which he said seems to be a cash cow for some. The minister said while the force should be commended for its crime fighting and other capabilities, issues of accountability cannot be swept under the carpet. The Home Affairs Minister said all officers of the police force must hold the banner of honesty high, adding that recent reports related to accountability in the force have put a dent in the force's image. He said with the accountability problem facing the Ghana police force and the lack of response to questions about those issues, a full audit will be carried out on the force's finances, financial dealings and procurement practices. So there will be and they have started reviews and investigations and audits in relation to the Guyana police force and also in relation to the other two agencies. If a policeman on the road decides to do right or left and people left money, it's a discredit to him and to the force in the public. If we can't account for the monies in the procurement process and money well, maybe not leaks out but pours out in ways in which it should not be, then there's a problem because we, I have to account for it at the parliament and other places. We have a procurement commission, we have an auditor general, Accountant General, we have an Integrity Commission and other places and persons, all will have to fall in line in relation to cleaning up and tidying up this problem. According to the Minister of Home Affairs, if money from the force is channeled to places it should not be, then that means there is massive corruption and collusion. He said there have been cases of fake invoices and payments being made for those invoices. And if people think they could hide and carry money wherever and whatever, and that we wouldn't find out. You don't need a doctorate to find out. We want new accountable policing. We want new and improved and honest work done. We want to see that the paper trail is not fraudulent because we hear a lot of issues and I know there's a lot of trolling back of invoices or whatever coming from locations all over the country. Mr. Ben said the symposium hosted by the Ghana Police Force should confront the issue of corruption in the police force with a view to root it out completely. He added that if the issue of corruption has reached a cancer stage in the force, swift treatment should be offered. Minister Ben said complaints about corruption in the police force has been mounting. Police must not extort people. Police must not wait for things to build up and get worse and then intervene only to put or find people in a situation where they have to pay money, where they have to pay bribes. This must stop. And he also took aim at senior officers who he said flaunt money and jewelry describing them as men who can be bought. Police commanders and others who find themselves in authority must not think that arriving at the job, that they need to award and reward themselves and to walk around with plenty gold and diamonds around the neck and the fingers. If they have that, it means there are men who could be bought. I can buy you because that's what you like and you flaunt it it must stop it must stop 
The statements by the Home Affairs Minister were made today, even as an investigation is being carried out into allegations of financial impropriety that have targeted Assistant Commissioner of Police Calvin Brutus. Brutus has since proceeded on annualized leave to allow an investigation to take place. More news coming up in just a moment. and ceilings. It's a lifetime of great memories and stories. Come talk to us and start your journey home today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Are you looking for the best high school education at affordable fees? Then register your child today at the VYC Academy. Now enrolling grades 7, 8, 9, and 10 students for the 2024-2025 academic year. VYC Academy, achieving academic excellence. For more information, call us on 227-1013 or WhatsApp us at 649-1300. Calling all small to large scale businesses. The International Building Expo 2024 is coming to the National Stadium from August 8th to 11th, 2024. Whether you're a small business or a major player, there's a package for you starting as low as $20,000. Network with industry leaders, boost your brand visibility, and generate high quality sales leads. Register now at www.buildingexpo.gy. That's www.buildingexpo.gy. GY or call 592-635-1103 or 592-635-1104. Oh no, oh. welcome to the building next oh, 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 yeah. Let's tell you now that Acting Police Commissioner Clifton Hicken appealed today to the public to be more measured in its criticism of the Ghana Police Force, noting that public perceptions play a big role in the force's morale. Speaking during the Ghana Police Force's 185th Anniversary Symposium this morning, Mr. Hicken said while the police force is not a perfect organization, it continues to make positive strides. He acknowledged that there are mistakes being made, but said that the public can help the force when those mistakes are made by making critical suggestions, rather than by attacking the force, its leaders and even junior ranks. Criticism is necessary for developing an organization like the Ghana Police Force in terms of uh, creating the evolution to be compatible to what is going on in a global sphere. We cannot work in isolation. And so, if you're going to be, if you're going to criticize us, 
we can be more constructive. We are children of parents bought it in Guyana. We are citizens of Guyana. And so when you speak to us, speak to us like your children, your brother, or a family. I think if we start breaking those barriers, as a nation of Guyana, I think we are going to do better. The acting top cops to the forces actively working to change its outlook and to come up to speed with modernization. He explained that many things will be done differently and in the process mistakes will be made. But those mistakes should not define the police force and its core values. But nothing is wrong with ventilating when, there, when there's issues within our organization. Now what is done is how it is done. And the same critical look or the same critical analysis you're doing for the police force, please, Praise us when we are making efforts. Equally, Mr. Hickens said the police force has been doing some good work in terms of reducing the country's crime rate and its work must be commended. Praise us when we are doing good and praise us for maintaining peaceful communities and praise us because incrementally we are doing well in terms of our crime statistics. Tools will always be a problem in terms of quantity. But we are maximizing what we have. And of course, we should be given kudos for that. The acting police commissioner said there will be a gradual shift in the operation of the Ghana Police Force, which will be to the betterment of the force and its members. He said the Ghana Police Force is maintaining an online presence also to deal with issues that may arise on social media. This, he said, is one of the strategies being employed to boost the capacity of the police force. One week after six-year-old Jeremiah Gustav was shot to the head while two gunmen fired at each other, the young boy remains hospitalized and unresponsive in a critical state. His mother, Keisha Gustav, is furious with the Ghana police force for not publishing wanted bulletins for the two gunmen, although those two men were identified by numerous witnesses. Today is a week now. I'm not getting no progress. I'm calling on the president. I'm calling the, tra the crime chief. I'm calling out everybody for the full support at this point in time for my son. It was last Tuesday night while her son Jeremiah sat close to her food stand in Charlestown that two gunmen opened fire at each other. The mother said when she turned to grab her son to run, he cried out for her as he fell to the ground and she spotted blood running from his head. She rushed him to the hospital, tearing off her shirt to stop the bleeding. He was admitted in an unconscious state and now along with his doctors, the young mother is holding on to hope, but she also wants justice. She said again, the police force must do a better job and needs to issue wanted bulletins for the two men who are responsible for her son being shot in their crossfire. Jeremiah is still lying down there, critical. These boys are around, right around this area and I'm still not getting no progress from the police, nobody. If I don't say well, I will go out and call somebody. Nobody's not coming to me and say well, how is Jeremiah or nothing. Nobody's not saying nothing. And up to now, these boys is not published as yet. Today's one week and for instance, I watching the internet just now. A man, he traveled with drugs. They don't give him four years in prison. Jeremiah is only six. No progress as yet, Mr. Mosley. I cannot understand this country. Why is it that you cannot get progress as yet for my six-year-old son? My son is in pain. I'm in pain. The whole family in pain at this point in time. The Ghana Police Force has not said anything since its initial release on the shooting incident last week. The two men involved in the shooting are well known in the area and have their families who still live in the Charlestown community. The concerned mother said seeing her son in his current state is heartbreaking and she would not want to take justice in her own hands. She wants the police and the authorities to act. I'm feeling real dumb with this Ghana police force. I'm calling on the crime chief. I'm calling on President Ali for progress for my son. I need justice for my son at this point in time. Miss Mosey, as you could see my condition. I'm not getting nothing, nothing. And if I decide to say, well, I take matters into my own hand, the police gun don't come running here looking for me. And these boys are around the area and 
The police is not doing nothing. Persons in the Charlestown community have identified the two men to law enforcement. One of them is known as Crab, while the other is known as Mice Man. During their initial investigations, a number of spent shells were recovered from the scene along Smythe Street in Charlestown. On the education front, the Ghana Teachers Union and the Ministry of Education have agreed to a number of non-financial measures, paving the way for discussions on the critical issue of salary increases and other financial benefits for teachers in the public sector to move ahead. GTU's General Secretary Coretta MacDonald today told News Source that the agreement was reached during the first round of negotiations, which took place last Thursday, following the end of the 75-day-long strike which rocked the education sector. The non-salary issues include duty-free concessions for some 300 teachers, the provision of 100 scholarships, hinterland benefits, conditions for re-employment, housing, and a number of welfare matters. We at the GTU, as a matter of fact, the teachers across this country, they are dedicated, they are committed, and because of their dedication, commitment, and resi resilience, that's why we are still in this country. That's why we are still in the schools, because we love what we do. Outside of loving what we do, we still have to live, we have to eat, we have to wear, we have to go, you know, go for places of relaxation, which is not a whole lot. And so the GTU has, over the years, we've been um, championing the cause for free and uh, fairness within the education sector. We've been championing the cause for just pay and equality. And that is the reason why we've been pushing for um, agreements upon agreements upon agreements. As negotiations continue, the GTU General Secretary said she would not be able to divulge particulars of the agreement reached on the non-financial matters. However, she said the union is looking forward to next Thursday's meeting, when the sites are expected to begin to hammer out salary increases for teachers, along with a number of other financial matters. The GTU has proposed a 39.5% salary increase for teachers on scales 1 to 3 for this year, and an additional 30% for next year, and another 30% for 2026. Additionally, the union is pushing for other teachers within the public education sector, particularly those on scales 4 to 19, to receive a salary increase of 35% for this year, with an additional 30% for next year and 2026. The proposals by the GTU were put forward in a proposed memorandum of agreement submitted to the Ministry of Education covering the years 2024 to 2026. McDonald said in arriving at its proposals, the GTU took a number of social and economic factors into consideration. The first meeting was very, um, very cordial. We, of course, we had our, our proposal, we spoke, we, we had our back and forth um, disagreements, and eventually we agreed to quite a lot of what was agreed on, on last Thursday. But the multi-year proposal also includes a number of additional financial measures, including a performance-based incentive of 2% per annum, an annual health risk allowance of $25,000, and monthly internet mobile data allowance of $10,000 to be paid to all all teachers, among other benefits. The GTU General Secretary said the union hopes that with its decision to shelve the earlier multi-year proposal covering 2019 to 2023, the government will find favor with the new proposed agreement and act in the best interests of the nation's teachers. Are you looking for the best high school education at affordable fees? Then register your child today at the VYC Academy. Now enrolling grades 7, 8, 9, and 10 students for the 2024-2025 academic year. VIC Academy, achieving academic excellence. For more information, call us on 227-1013 or WhatsApp us at 649-1300.
your own home is so much more than just four walls, floors and ceilings. It's a lifetime of great memories and stories. Come talk to us and start your journey home today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Buster! Bust the flavor, flavors! We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors! Bust the flavors! That my craver! We're full of flavors! Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors! Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors! Yeah! Thirst Buster! Grab a Buster! Bust the flavor, taste the savor! Buster! Bust the flavor, flavors! Buster! Bust the flavor, flavors! Declaring that he has not seen a letter from the representative of the list from the new movement to recall Dr. Asher Kassoun from the National Assembly, the clerk of the National Assembly, Sherlock Isaacs, told News Source on Monday that if such a letter was sent to the Speaker of the Assembly from the representative of the list, then that would be sufficient to recall Dr. Kassoun from Parliament. Over the weekend, member of a new and united Ghana and former Speaker of the National Assembly, Ralph Ramkaran, launched a scathing attack against Dr. Kisun for not relinquishing her parliamentary seat and making way for the representative from Anag to take up the seat in keeping with the Join the Party's agreement. The representative of the list for the TNM, Dr. Gerald Ford, said he had written to the Speaker of the National Assembly back in March, stating that the parties have lost confidence in Dr. Kassoun, and therefore she should be recalled. Contacted on Monday, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Manzo Nadir, did not confirm or deny whether he had received the letter. Instead, he said his response to the issue would be silence. Press further, the speaker noted that the person who usually writes GCOM on changes in the National Assembly would be the clerk of the House. But the clerk is maintaining that he has not seen any letter from TNM's representative of the list. Last week, the Ghana Elections Commission said it cannot remove Dr. Kesun from her seat in Parliament unless a vacancy exists. Over the weekend, Mr. Ramkaran agreed that GCOM cannot replace Kisuna, but she can only be replaced if the Speaker of the Assembly declared that a vacancy exists. He said since the Speaker has not done so, GCOM cannot displace Kisuna. He also maintained that the letter from the head of the list for a new movement is with the Speaker. Ram Karan also argued that removing Dr. Kassoun should not have been such a complicated issue since there is precedence in the National Assembly. The clerk agreed with that position of Mr. Ram Karan and said that the process outlined by him has been used before to remove a member of the National Assembly. Prior to the 2020 general and regional elections, a new and united Guyana, the new movement, and the Liberty and Justice Party decided to enhance their chances of gaining representation in the National Assembly by coming together. Following the elections, the three parties then combined their votes and were able to get a seat in the National Assembly. The LJP took the first turn. Its leader Lennox Schumann represented that party for the assigned period and resigned at the end of that period. In Ugg, the party which gained the second highest number of votes was next in line, but it allowed the TNM to go ahead, which gained only approximately 500 votes and was entitled to only three months in the National Assembly. Since then, the TNM leader Asha Kassoun has not relinquished the seat. Twelve years after he was freed of the murder of the mother of his children, East Coast Amarama resident Haslin Hodge found himself back in court today, facing a new murder charge, this one related to the death of another woman. 
Hodge appeared at the Diamond Magistrates Court this afternoon where he was charged for the murder of 23-year-old Venezuelan national Evelyn Alves. The woman's lifeless body was found dumped at the side of the roadway in the new Diamond Housing development on the east bank of the Marara with a bullet wound to the head. Two construction workers discovered the body on the morning of the 7th of July while doing work in the area. The police launched a full investigation, which led to the arrest of Haslin Hodge as the prime suspect. Advice from the Director of Public Prosecutions was sought, and based on the advice received, the man was slapped with a murder charge this afternoon. He was not required to enter a plea during his appearance, and was immediately remanded to prison. He will make his next court appearance in August. In 2008, Hodge was charged over the murder of the mother of his children, Tamasha Riddle. She was found in her bed with a pillow over her face, and it was later revealed that she had been stifled to death. Hodge went on trial four years later for the murder charge. However, during that trial, Justice Navendra Singh freed him on a no-case submission after agreeing with his attorneys that there was insufficient evidence tying the man to the murder of the woman. Calling all small to large scale businesses, the International Building Expo 2024 is coming to the National Stadium from August 8th to 11th, 2024. Whether you're a small business or a major player, there's a package for you starting as low as $20,000. Network with industry leaders, boost your brand visibility, and generate high quality sales leads. Register now at www.buildingexpo.gy. That's www.buildingexpo.gy. GY or call 592-635-1103 or 592-635-1104. Oh no, oh. welcome to Berlin next Oh, 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 yeah. another car or is it a house if you're looking for sweetness to put inside a basket i am the holy holy blanket market get ready for the third edition of blankets and baskets on august 4 2024 the maltino's ground comes alive with guyana's best entertainers and a vibe that can't be matched come for a chance to win numerous prizes including the grand prize of a Tickets are $6,000 with other special luxury packages from $40,000 to $120,000. It's the Blankets and Baskets Extravaganza. For more information, check out Blankets and Baskets on Facebook. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming, and we're all part of it. Guy Oil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Gaia's profit goes back to building schools, roads, another important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Gaia has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. NYC, New York City. Get ready as the original Big People Party with the same vibes you've seen and love comes to you this Labor Day weekend on Saturday, August 31st with some of the biggest one-man bands out of Guyana and New York. Look out for Super A, Murphy, Busta, and Super Terry. Big People Party! Along with the legendary Glenn Washington. Baby, don't my kindness for weakness. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. 
Glenn Washington and his band at Industry City, New York City. Get your Super Early Bird General tickets at $40 and VIP access, $150 all inclusive. And all are available at HJExperience.com. This event is brought to you by Hits and Jabs Entertainment, Marvelous Entertainment, and GD Events. It's the original Big People Party at Industry City, New York City, on Saturday, August 31st, the Big and Proper Edition. With your regional and international news tonight, I am Swetlana Marshall in the region. Sniffer dogs in Ecuador have found 6.23 tons of cocaine hidden in a banana shipment, police say. BBC in a report said the dogs alerted their handlers who seized 5,630 parcels filled with white substance that later tested positive for cocaine. The shipment was destined for Germany, officials said, and would have been worth $224 million had it reached its destination. Five people had been arrested following the discovery, according to the Prosecutor General's office. Police said they had found the massive cooking hall during a routine inspection of containers stored at a deep water port southwest of Ecuador's largest city, Guayaquil. The cocaine parcels had been hidden beneath crates of bananas. Let's tell you now that a total of 100 compressed natural gas CNG buses arrived in Jamaica on Monday, which will significantly boost the Jamaica Urban Transit Company Limited JUTC fleet and improve service delivery to the public. According to Jamaica Gleaner, the new units acquired at a cost of approximately 20 million US dollars were transported to the Portmore Depot after being cleared at Kingston Wharfs. They bring the total number of buses introduced into the public transportation system to 170 since 2023. Jamaica's Minister of Science, Energy, Telecommunications and Transport said the buses will go a far way in transforming the public transportation sector. He noted that the units are the first set of 300 new buses that are to be introduced into the public transport sector. He said too that as part of the J UTC strategic plan to improve its operations, the unit is looking to introduce an app that will better enable members of the public to organize their commute. And finally tonight, international news. Israeli forces battled Hamas-led fighters in several parts of the Gaza Strip on Tuesday, and Palestinian health officials said at least 57 people were killed in Israeli bombardments of southern and central areas. The Palestinian Islamist military group Hamas has accused Israel of stepping up attacks in Gaza to try to derail efforts by Arab mediators and the United States to reach a ceasefire deal. Israel says it is trying to root out Hamas fighters. In Rafa, a southern border city where Israeli forces have been operating since May, five Palestinians were killed in an airstrike on a house, Gaza health officials said. In nearby Khan Yonis, a man, his wife and two children were killed, they said. Later on Tuesday, an Israeli airstrike on a car killed at least 17 Palestinians and wounded 26 others in Khan Yonis in southern Gaza, the official said. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.